after this World Circular Economy Forum, I am hopeful that a good circular future will feel like it's possible. There is no way we can confront the life-threatening issue of um, the climate crisis and the biodiversity crisis without a circular economy. Uh, we should never forget that half of the total greenhouse gas emissions and more than 90% of biodiversity loss come from resource extraction and processing. The first thing that we need to do is create much more awareness about the link between the climate crisis and the circular economy solution. Uh, I think that's much too much a secret, uh, far too much a secret. We need to, to, to get the word out. To use market regulatory tools for creating a level playing field, also boosting international trade mm -hmm. and uh, creating incentives. The circular economy has remain on the top of our political agenda. And I would say that it even has climbed even higher. Uh, the circular economy agenda responds to a need to think together beyond the immediate crisis, to deliberately shape the recovery, to take the opportunity, and of course, to build back better. We stand ready to be partner of the European Commission and of course, uh, of uh, Commissioner Sienkiewicz's to, to really make this happen and to implement it in a coherent way, which makes uh, business and environmental sense. We need uh, global solutions, but we need to implement them locally. We need all sectors. It's not just business that can do this. We need business, civil society, governments, the true cost accounting for natural capital and their impacts uh, and dependencies is required. It's actually been um, an exciting transformation for us as we're reinventing our portfolio with the sustainability value commitments, that our senior scientists are now asking about circularity. What happens at, when the product is done being used? Or what is the raw material? What's its history? Where is it been? So it's really getting into the core of our company and R&D. The Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Agreement speaks to leaving no one behind. And so people who may lose their jobs need to have alternative livelihoods, need to have support for retraining. And there has to be clearly new prioritized green industry and pandemic recovery packages can help to ensure that any potential uh, folks who may come up short are supported in this transition. And this can be done through, amongst others, obviously the massive stimulus packages. One lesson we learned from the pandemic is what we can really accomplish when we all work together, countries, communities and neighbours, to address a common cause. This is a lesson we all need to apply to the environmental challenges of our time. Finding partnerships who can sort of with direct beneficiaries, so folks that are looking for secondary markets for materials, um, folks that are offering a remanufacturing service, finding more creative ways worth for working with your supply chain. These are all things that I think, you know, they exist today. Um, it's just a matter of finding how to sort of connect the dots. Africa has never been more united in terms of its interest in trade integration than it is right now. We must aim high. With the change we seek in the world, suddenly tackling systemic transformations that are needed, I'm delighted that the ambition of the circular economy and circularity in these movements is exactly what is needed. For us at the African Development Bank, we recognize, like some colleagues have said, let us get into action. We do, we invest about 11, 10 to 11 billion dollars every year, largely to governments, and we are insisting that government must mainstream certain things into their projects. Climate change, 100% mainstream. Circular economy, yes, we're working on it. You know, green growth, 100% mainstream. Some of the things that we're, we've been thinking about are really individuals on three levels. There's individuals as leaders. We talk about that a lot. We're a platform of CEOs and ministers, but there's local leadership as well. And so in the partnership realm, especially, there is the global leader who can set an ambition and a vision and keep the drumbeat moving on a, on a project. And, and certainly in circular economy, you need that, but you need the local leader to contextualize and to drive home the, the value and, and the results. We basically have a sort of a three C model if we look at partnership. And the three C stand for courageous, it stands for caring, and it stands for collaboration. And if, if it's two out of three, the partnership will fail. It should all three. 
Yeah, ultimately, circular economy has the potential to go to the root causes of many of the world's greatest challenges, global challenges. And when you get to that root cause, you then turn the economy into the solution rather than the problem, or part of the solution rather than the problem. And when that economy is circular, when that economy is driven by opportunity, when that economy can decouple growth from resource constraints, when it actually is about building something regenerative and restorative, then the faster we do that, the better. Looking at Horizon Europe, for instance, we have, as you know, the missions approach. We have five missions, of which four, if you think of them, have circularity embedded in them. Um, you know, whether it's clean cities, whether it's clean oceans, whether it is climate adaptation, whether it's food and soil. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to reshape our economy. Join us at the next WCEF events.